Yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll make a start. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to this uh, very interesting um, webinar uh, with Tim Rivets. Uh, the topic today is about integrating demand responsive transport uh, information in journey planners, and that's uh, by that we mean third party journey planners. Um, and uh, particularly what uh, what we will go through today is uh, how people can find out um, about DRT services within their areas in third party uh, travel planners. Uh, before we kick off, uh, just to mention that uh, this session is recorded, uh, you can request the video, um, you will get information how to get the video uh, or the slides. Uh, if, uh, if Tim agrees to share the slides, we can uh, you will get uh, an email later, uh, as well as um, for those who attend, uh, a feedback form for the event. Uh, we'll share that later. Um, so for those who don't know me, my name is Stelios Rodoulis. I head the Pass Center of Excellence. Uh, just a, a very quick introduction to the Pass Center of Excellence. Uh, we are um, the Pass Center of Excellence is um, is funded by the DFT and uh, and is part of the Chartered Institution of Highways and Transportation. So essentially, the Pass Center of Excellence is delivered by the CIHT. Uh, so without any further ado, I will introduce Tim, and then we can start the session. Uh, for those who don't know Tim Rivet, uh, Tim is a consultant and uh, and works for Arctic Inform. Uh, Tim has over 25 years of experience in transport technology. Uh, he initially initially began working in the public sector, and he now run, runs Arctic, which is a community organization for public transport technology stakeholders. Uh, and uh, and he's also a member of the CEN working groups uh, for public transport data, but also uh, team works as an independent consultant. Uh, his particular niche expertise is in systems to improve public transport information. And uh, importantly, team, team has been involved in the development and improvement of passenger information through policy development and practical initiatives uh, across large parts of the country. And uh, so, yeah, without any further ado, uh, over to Tim, and we can take uh, questions later. And uh, yeah, towards the end of the session, we can have, uh, as I said, uh, we want this to be an interactive session. So please keep your questions to the end and come armed with questions also for Tim and for myself. Uh, so yeah, over to Tim now. Tim, go for it. Yeah, thank you, Stelios. Um, yeah, we we definitely want the uh, there to be a decent uh, amount of discussion um because uh, i'm going to set three uh challenges um and we need to uh, really work out how we get from where we are at the moment um so yeah i'm going to talk to you about um how we might go about integrating demand responsive transport and all the variants that sort of fit under that characterization into uh the title says journey planners, but uh, apps, uh, websites, whatever you want to, uh, to to use to find out information about public transport. So um, a couple of years ago, as part of work that was taking place for the bus open data service, um, there was some uh, uh, investigative work done um, looking at uh, demand responsive transport and um, what data was available about it um, and um, we found that um, as more and more authorities were being encouraged to trial demand responsive uh, transport one of the key challenges was was actually how do people find out about these services um, particularly uh, in rural areas where people are uh, more spread out uh, with less dense populations um, it's often really difficult for people to find out about public transport services in general let alone those that typically with these sort of services have been marketed and presented as as separate services uh, if you didn't live or work in the area when the leaflets happen to get pushed through the door uh, then how do you actually find out about them 
um, and that was one of the biggest issues to, for take up. Um, but uh, a lot of authorities were talked to. Um, every single one of them had a flexible service in their area. Um, and these are all the services that are open to the public and therefore require publicising. We're not talking here about community transport operations with restricted membership uh, and usage requirements and things like that. These are uh, those that anybody can use. Um, and um, majority of authorities now are considering demand responsive as part of the core public transport network, not just an add on. You know, 10 years ago, they, they were a bit of a, um, you know, we're going to give this a go. Um, it's a nice bolt on to to the core public transport network these days for large parts of the country. These are actually part of the core public transport network. And so it's increasingly important that we do something about making information about these services more widely available uh, than they are at the moment. Um, if we uh, take, for example, quite a well uh, advertised service in Shropshire, the Connect, um, got a number of zones. Um, been around a little while, um, but if you use uh, a popular journey planner, uh, travel line in this case, for those of you that are uh, that are astute and, uh, and used to uh, trying to work out what service is, is the screenshot from and things like that. So even a service like travel line doesn't understand that actually you can get some form of service uh, from the villages uh, because it just doesn't understand how to deal with it and present information um, and so really what I want to explore is is how we sort this out um, how do we get to the point where your chosen journey planner be it travel line be it google be it city mapper be it whatever service you want to use uh, understands that actually there is public transport provision in an area where it is provided by something that is not a traditional bus service. Um, part of the problem, I think, is that um, demand responsive or flexible service, uh, dialer ride on demand, flexibus, Uber style, these were just the names that I thought up from what I've seen around the place. Um, you, if you run a service, you will probably call it something different. Every service seems to have its own unique name. Um, from a public perspective, I think that's part of the problem. Um, but generally, the sort of services that we're looking at and thinking about are those that are not traditional fixed route, fixed timetable services. Um, but it includes things that are part fixed and part flexible. You know, there might be a bit on the end of a route that you can request or book. Um, there might be a bit in the middle that you need to do that. Um, they might be a fixed route, but actually it only runs if you've booked it. Um, or it could be truly uh, flexible, both in, in route and timetable. Um, but there are as many different ways of describing it as services operating. Um, so um, with with that in mind, whatever we do needs to be able to cope with a really wide variety of options and not only cater for uh, a few of these types of services. Um, but fundamentally, the key thing is how do people find out about these services because we actually want people to be using them um, and there's quite a lot of evidence based now that um, the best way to get people to uh, to use flexible and demand responsive services is actually to make them aware of them in the first place um, not just a one one time push um, people increasingly are unable to pay attention to things if they just receive them once. So they need to be constantly being fed uh, information that says that 
these are there. And so as many services as we can should be promoting them. Um, but they also, because they're part of the core public transport network, they really need to be considered as integrated with all the other bits of public transport that go around. A lot of the time they're publicised and promoted as 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 independent um, in the information that's provided where actually um, you're going to get better take up if you uh, if you're promoting them in conjunction with connecting services, for example, Nottinghamshire are pretty good at doing this um, in their information. You know, where else can you get from these? Because a service that only operates in a zone, um, uh, if you're limiting people's thoughts uh, about where they can go, you know, you are limiting their mobility. Um, but there's a lot of evidence base, as I say, to say that they need to be considered integrated and regularly promoted. Uh, Transport for the North did some work a few years ago uh, that identified that integration is going to be key, particularly with uh, longer distance services. So uh, long distance bus, uh, rail networks, those sort of things, for example. Um, and um, it's not just promoting them in isolated um, ways. Uh, every service, I think, has some form of app these days. Um, uh, you need to start to think outside of just that app for the booking and that sort of thing, because uh, people, uh, uh, if you need that to find out that there's a service there, then you're not going to get the traction that you need. Um, the uh, DFT, um local authority toolkit for drt um also uh, suggests that uh, they're most effective when integrated with mainstream networks uh, because they're not always the right thing um and they can uh, they 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 add rather than being uh, the sole thing um transport for wales with their flexi scheme uh, did some work Again, a couple of years ago now, um, using Transport Focus. Um, and once people understood the concept and that there was some form of service there, um, people saw it as an attractive option um, and were quite willing to use it. And that's shown by the success of, uh, of some of the longer standing flexi services that are out there in Wales. Um, but promotion and education are really key. Uh, on an ongoing basis, because you know, if you were in an area when that leaflet was delivered, when that initial promotion was given, then fair enough. But six months down the line, do people remember that? If you've got somebody new moving into the area, how do they know it even exists? You know, because it's typically not using bus stops, so there's no infrastructure on the side of the road for people to see. Uh, and even more importantly, if you've got uh, visitors to an area, if you're in a tourist area, how do people find out about these services? Because uh, you can achieve significant patronage, uh, particularly you know, in areas where you've got an awful lot of congestion with tourists and holiday makers. You know, in, in national parks and things like that, increasing pressure to drive people onto public transport and away from cars. Uh, this needs to be more and more integrated. So um, how do we um, actually go about that? Um, so I think the first question we need to ask is what do we want to achieve? Um, and uh, we've identified three sort of broad approaches. The first one um, is full integration. So I sit there on Travel Line or Google, I do my journey plan um, and I can book onto that service in that single platform. I don't need to worry about going off anywhere else. Uh, it's a seamless uh, transaction. Um, now, that is very much uh, mass territory, uh, mobility as a service. Um, 
I don't think we're we're ready for that by any stretch of the imagination at the moment. Um, so let's put that to one side. What's the next level of uh, of integration that we might be able to achieve? Um, somewhere in the middle, um, people can plan a journey on their chosen journey planner, uh, and and it knows that I want to go from uh, A to B at a particular time. Uh, and part of that plan needs uh, a demand responsive service. And so uh, I can go straight from my planner into the demand responsive service booking system. And it knows that I need to be getting a demand responsive service at 12.17 on, uh, on Tuesday the 13th. Um, and um, all I need to do is uh, uh, put in the uh, the payment details and away we go. Um, so not doing that whole booking, you know, I need to go to another service, but that other service understands that I've already given information to uh, something else and I'm not having to re-enter it. Um, and... Um, the lowest level, and this is the one that I think we can start to achieve something very quickly, um, at least the base level of awareness. You know, I can plan a journey from A to B if part of that uh, needs a demand responsive service, then um, I'm become aware that actually part of that is a demand responsive service and where I can go and find out more information about that service. So uh, it's a bit more um, effort on the passenger's perspective, but it's better than the current situation where it'll just go, you can't get there on public transport. You need to drive, you need to get a taxi, something like that. You know, actually, at least this would get us to the point where uh, there is awareness um, that there is some form of public transport provision uh, in an area and how I go about booking it. Now, we know this is possible. Um, places uh, around the world are doing it now um, over in Minnesota, as an example. Um, you can go on to their app. It will give you uh normal public transport options uh, and it will also give you a uh, demand responsive service if you need it um, and you can go on and find out the information of that and because it's an app on your phone actually it'll pre-populate your dialing stuff so actually you just need to go call and uh, and away you go and get through to the uh, to the demand responsive service um, so, you know, we know that it's entirely possible to achieve this uh, with the right effort and the, with the right thinking. Um, so uh, how can we go about sorting this out in the UK where we've got a bit more of a uh, disparate um, public transport uh, set of services? So... Um, how can we achieve this digital integration? Um, unfortunately, computers work best when um, they are provided with um, lots of um, highly organized data. Um, and because demand responsive services um, are all a bit uncertain from from a planning point of view, you know they don't have a fixed route and a fixed timetable. Journey planners uh, are challenged by this. Um, over the years, a number of different approaches have been um, put in place by different people to uh, try and overcome this. Uh, the favourite and the most successful is you set up a dummy timetable um, with lots of options from A to B uh, at various times um, because journey planners understand traditional timetable services. And so uh, you're then reliant on um, notes and codes to let people know that actually that's not a real journey and they need to book something and this is how you do it um, but 
that relies on um, third parties understanding how to use those notes and things like that and a lot of them don't and so um, people do turn up in a particular place expecting a bus to run at a particular time to a destination and find out it was never going to be there for them because they needed to book it um, so um, how do we overcome that we need to plan for procurement uh, for integration sorry uh, much earlier than we are at the moment um, you know we're coming to this where there's a lot of demand responsive services out there uh, with no integration um, and no sharing of data um, we really need to be planning for this up front um, making sure that in the uh, specification that people are going out and procuring uh, it actually says and you will make data available to third party journey planners or, or whatever it is, whatever language is used so we need to be coming at this from ideally from a much earlier point in time than we are now but um, where we are where we are the good old taxi driver of I wouldn't start from here, Governor, um, you know, uh, position, but um, we do need to um, uh, start from where we are because it is um, where we are. Um, and so we need to start to uh, make data available. We need to be working with uh, the technology partners that people have got in place to um, make sure that data um, is able to be um, shared and made available, ideally using standards, uh, because that makes it easier for the whole supply chain to, to know what they're doing um, and make it repeatable. Um, and when services get re-procured, include it in the procurement process. So um, what data standards are available um how might we uh, use those so there are really uh, three around that may be appropriate um in the uk um time fixed route fixed uh time service information is shared using a format called trans exchange and xml based standard it's the way that data gets into the bus open data service um, and uh, it is the the mandated format in legislation um, last year a flexible service profile was created for uh, bods using trans exchange and so that lays out how data can be provided to bods and then anybody that's consuming that data um, will be able to know not just about um, fixed route, fixed timetable, but also demand responsive. Um, there is uh, documentation on it. There are videos on how to use it. Um, and uh, if people have got questions, then um, I'm more than happy to uh, uh, help you understand how to use that. Um, it is as simple as possible. Um, it is not rocket science. There is nothing in there that people will not know. Um, it just says what the area is covered, be that stops or zones, uh, areas. Um, when it operates, you know, Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturday 9 till 5 or, or whatever it is, and how to book. Uh, what the phone number is, what the app is, or the website. Um, uh, a minimal amount of information is needed. Uh, the challenge is, um, because it's XML, it's not a particular user-friendly format if you don't have a tool to create it. Um, and so um, it's not something that somebody can just open up in Word and type a few things in to a table and, and away you go uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that um, but it's not difficult um, so that is the way that um, if 
you're providing data to BODS and uh, the DFT are encouraging people uh, increasingly strongly to uh, provide it to BODS, um, then that will get into journey planners. Um, then um, a standard GTFS flex, uh, GTFS, uh, general transit feed specification, um, is a format that's easier to use in some ways than TransExchange. Uh, it's used uh, quite widely across the world. Uh, fairly recently, uh, there was an extension to that uh, called Flex to support flexible services. Um, and that uh, is starting to gain adoption um, and some of the suppliers into the UK for DRT uh, already support that. Um, so, you know, how do we get that data into Trans Exchange to get it into BODS, into third parties? Uh, that's uh, a question that we need to be asking and working with people on. Um, and the the third that's worth referencing is something called NetEx, which is a European standard um, in the same family uh, as Siri. Um, which lots of people are using. Uh, again, uh, it's mandated for supplying location data to BODS. Um, so, you know, it, it's within that family. And if you're supplying FAIRS data to BODS, then you're using NetEx. So that's getting increasing awareness. Um, if you're in the, U in the European market as a supplier, you're going to have to support NetEx for flexible services because uh, the latest set of directives and regulations around uh, multimodal traveler information service uh, require it. Um, so we're gonna start to see uh, a lot more suppliers starting to adopt that. There's an awful lot of similarities in NetEx uh, to TransExchange. Um, so uh, flipping between formats becomes uh, easier in that case than between GTFS and uh, Trans Exchange. But there's quite a lot of help and support around for all three uh, formats. Um, but we do need to be in the UK focusing on uh, Trans Exchange. So um, that's how we can go about getting data into uh, journey planners. Uh, there is an interesting uh, challenge. How do they actually work with this less certain data? Um, journey planner suppliers are um, putting quite a lot of effort and thought into um, how they can use this data. And we know uh, elsewhere in the world, uh, the international journey planners are using uh, flexible services quite successfully in, in planning engines and things like that. Um, so again, uh, something we know is possible. So I, at this point, I'm going to uh, pose three questions to you and we'll open up the floor because uh, these are the big things I think that are stopping us um, actually getting integration and uh, sharing of data. Um, so um, what needs to happen to achieve integration? Um, two broad areas in that. Um, what do people procuring, so authorities and operators, need to do to specify to get the integration they want? A question to suppliers, but also to those procuring. Um, how do we get the right text in the right documents at the right time? Um, and uh, for suppliers, what do you need to help you uh, with integration and enable it? Um, so uh, at this point, I'll open the floor uh, yeah. to people. Because yeah, I think I'm you're sure team. you have some views. Yeah, uh, we welcome everyone now to chip in with other questions around, or oh, sorry, or comments around these three questions, uh, and then we can also take uh, we can take um, uh, other questions later. So we can discuss these questions for the next 10 minutes or so. Um, so yeah, uh, please pe put your digital hand up if you want to raise a question or, or, or a comment about these three questions, essentially. Are there any other questions or shall we bring this to an end, the session? 
Um, yeah, uh, so thank you, team. Uh, thank you for the presentation and thank you for all this uh, food for thought uh, because it, uh, from my point of view, is um, sorting this issue out. Uh, it's going to really help, I think, the DRT services to take routes and become more sustainable by bringing more passengers. The more visible we make DRT schemes on any app, I think that's a good thing to do. Uh, and we should work together as an industry to put this in place and uh, and champion for these changes. Um, so I, we, we will you will receive uh, uh, an email later tonight or tomorrow with a feedback form for the event and uh, hopefully the slides. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for joining. If you are not a Bus Center of Excellence member, uh, you will also receive an email with uh, joining details. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for joining and thank you team for the um, for the talk. Very interesting. Thank okay. you. So I will stop the call here. So yeah, again, thank you for joining us. Cheers. Have a good day.